Expander pellets are one of the very best baits you can get, especially at this time of year, autumn and winter, and I'm going to show you how to make the most out of this super effective bait. Now, welcome back to the channel, everyone, and thanks everyone who's watched lately. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. It's free, get it done. T subject today, micros and expanders. More importantly, the expander pellet fishing. Now, all summer, all year, I've been hard pellet mad, but expanders come into their own at this time of year. We're talking autumn, we're talking winter, and these tips should help you catch loads more fish. Now, for full disclosure, all of the tips are gonna be at the front end of this video. Then the actual fishing is gonna be at the back end. So if you just wanna get in, get the tips and get out and move on to another video, watch the front end. But if you wanna stick around and watch me catch a loads of fish with these tactics, then hang around and watch till the very end. Now, firstly, the expanders themselves, Four mil or two mil expanders at this time of year will get you loads of bites, whether that's skimmers, whether that's F1s, whether that's carp. Four mils more for carp, two mils are magic when it comes to skimmers and silverfish, but if I just wanted to pick one size, four mil would be it. Pro expanders, you can't go wrong with pro expanders. You've seen these little tubs before, I've shown them on the channel. They're perfect for doing your pro expanders. I get them off Amazon, absolutely perfect. Just little, I don't even know what I, go, what I put into Amazon to find them, just screw top lid uh, pots I think I put in. They're perfect for this though. Get one of the deeper ones. You don't want them little skinny ones because pro expanders need plenty of water. Put a few in the bottom, cover them with nice cold water, leave them overnight and they'll be perfect. In here I've got more than enough. Just a palm full. Goes a long, long way with expanders and those beauties will catch me loads of fish. They're a lovely, robust pellet. Absolutely fantastic. They catch loads of fish and they sink. So we're gonna catch loads of them. Now, without a doubt, the best feed for expander fishing are micros. Now, these are just fishery micros, quite dark in colour, actually. They're the latest sort of batch, they're quite dark in colour. But the important thing is how you prepare them. Get to the bank, do them as soon as you get, like I've come to Shearsby Valley today, popped in the shop, got some fish, fishery pellets, I've filled the tub up, that's a pint tub, covered them with water and I've just left them. Set up the rest of my stuff, done me a bit of filming, set my rigs up. And here we are about 40 minutes later and they've had plenty of time. If you can get your pellets before that, the longer you do them, the better. So if you can do them the night before, pop them in the fridge, even better. But micros are the best feed. So we've got two things there that are gonna get us loads of fish. So let's have a little look at the rigs. Let's have a look how we're gonna feed them and let's have a look how we're gonna plumb up because they are the important things when it comes to expander fishing. Next thing when it comes to expander fishing is the rig and the rig is really important. It's very simple, but it's important to get it right because expanders by their very nature are very buoyant bait. So there's no actual weight in the hook bait to register on the bristle. So your rig and your shots need to do all the work for you. A fish can pick an expander up and you cannot, it might not even register on that bristle if you don't have your rig set up right. So it's important to do so. Let's start at the top end. We've got a nice short line between pole tip and float. I'll explain about lifting later when we actually get fishing, how important it is to just lift into those bites so your bait doesn't come off. Having a short line will allow you to do that. I've got some back shot. I always fish with back shot as a matter of course, but very important. I've got a bulk of three in the middle there, but I will happily stagger them. I did a video recently where I had them staggered and people were like, wow, wow, wow. But Alan Scott on showed me that years ago and it's brilliant for soft pellet fishing where you need to be right over the top of your float, lifting up into those little indications, keeps that line tight. And it's particularly effective on windy days when you can't use such a short line. Float choice, nice and simple. I've got a Cipri, I've got a four by 12 on. It's exactly three foot deep where I'm fishing. I could use a four by 14, but a four by 12 is quite nice. We are sort of getting into that autumn. It's November now. So fishing with a little bit more delicacy doesn't hurt and a 4x12 is about right. It's got a 1.7 mil bristle. I can dot that right down. It should fish perfect. So I'll show you how important it is to dot that float down when we get fishing. Now I've plumbed that up to the bristle. I've not plumbed it up to the bottom of the body like I normally do. When I'm fishing expanders on a hard bottom, I know I'm fishing on a sunken island out there, it's a hard bottom, I wanna fish as accurately as possible. So as soon as a fish touches that expander, I know about it. So onto the shotting, and this is the important part. You can use all sorts of fancy shotting patterns, but when it comes to expanders, you need the shot to do the job of registering the bite on the float. So all of my shot is down this bottom end. So I've got a little short four inch hook length, and I've actually got a number 10 stock on the hook length so it's nice and kind on the line and I can put it a little bit closer to the hook if I feel like I'm not seeing the bites but 
about three inches from the hook is about right. It's a nice compromise between getting too close to the hook and not close enough. And then the rest of the bulk shot is just staggered slightly above it. So a centimetre apart, that's all. But everything is down this bottom end. Everything's very direct. I'm setting a little trap of pellets. I'm fishing exactly dead depth, which I'll show you how to plumb up in a minute. And I'm lowering it right on that little pile of pellets and I'm waiting for a bite. I'm not interested in watching the pellet fall through the water or anything like that. I'm just trying to present my bait as quickly as possible over that little pile of pellets. And that is it. The next thing is how we're going to feed these pellets. So that's the next tip. So the thing about micro pellets is they're tiny. So catapulting them out is pretty much out of the equation. And all of our bait is going to be delivered through pole pots today. Now it comes as no surprise that you need to use several different pots, maybe throughout the day, but certainly throughout the, the seasons. So when it's really cold, or even today where I know there's a lot of fish, this tiny little guru pot might just be enough bait to keep the fish interested. But if I'm not getting any fish in my peg, I feel like I need to, uh, and maybe I'm catching too many small fish and I feel like I need to up the bait, I'll use something like this small Preston one. And then on a real red letter day, I might have to go up to this sort of medium Guru. But the three different pots that I've got there just give me three totally different options. And this tiny little one, although it looks minuscule and hardly holds any bait, on venues like this where there's plenty of bites and cold water, it can be enough to get you the bites. Um, all I do is cut some holes around the bottom, it allows the pellets to come out of the pot dead quick. But for your feeding, get yourself a two or three different size pots and work through the pots throughout the day. Now you may be thinking, why don't you just use the medium one? and only put a little bit of bait in the bottom. Well, I find it quite hard to um, regulate myself. I like to load the pot up the same every single time. So if I use a small pot, like a tiny little one like this, I know that if I fill it up, it's the same every single time. Whereas if I was to use that amount of pellets in a bigger pot, sometimes it wouldn't be quite right. I wouldn't be able to press them in the same so that they clump out. I just find it hard to regulate myself with a bigger pot. Now there's two ways of feeding the micros. Once you've got your pot sorted, whether to use an open pot, or a sprinkle lid. Now, sometimes in the winter, just clumping them in like that, most of the times of the year, in fact, is the best. Filling your pot up, giving it a nice little press, and then potting them in in one go can be the best way. It gets the pellets on the bottom nice and quick, and then you can present your bait over it. However, some days you might need to feed, say you're fishing in the middle of winter and it's hard conditions and you're trying to eke out every F1 or every small carp, you might need to just repeat the process over and over again. That's where sprinkle lids come in. So you can get a nice little bit of bait in there, cover it up with a sprinkle lid, get out to the spot, sprinkle out seven or eight pellets, wait a few minutes for a bite. If you don't get one, sprinkle a few more in, don't get one, sprinkle a few more in. And it just allows you to keep a few pellets fluttering through. And sometimes on, on like really cold winter days, that can get you bite. So they're the two options. That's why these pots come with lids. So you can open them up and use them as the clump, the, like the clumping style, which is the most popular style for sure. But on those winter days, don't ignore these sprinkle lids because they can help you get more bites, especially like I say, when it's rock hard. Okay, so we've got our rig sorted, that positive bulk down rig. Now the next thing is how we're gonna plumb it up. Now I'm looking to try and plumb up to the bristle. I'm gonna use a nice positive uh, plummet. So I've got a 30 gram plummet on and I'm looking just to get onto the bristle slightly onto the body i'm not too bothered about that that's that's okay but i certainly don't want to be plumbing up down halfway down the float or anything like that so i know that this lake is like a sunken island out there like a like a like a bar i suppose now i'm just going to try and fish on top of that nice and accurate you see that just see that's just getting there look you see just on my mark there i'm on to, onto the bristle ever so slightly onto the, the body of the float. And that, for me, expander fishing, on a relatively calm day, I think that that is a nice starting point. So that's how we've plumbed up. Let's see if we can catch a few fish. Now, pellets are very instant. By that, I mean you can pot them in and get a, a, an indication or a bite within one or two chucks. Right, now to hook the expander, all we're gonna do is take the pellet and then through the rounded edge, feed our size 16 hook through it and then you've got a lovely hooked expander. All we're gonna to do to feed, we're not gonna put any big pots in or anything like that, we don't need to. Pellets are so instant that you don't need to do none of that. I'm just gonna pot in, I've put that, I don't even know what size it is, it's like a mini guru. I'm gonna put a mini guru on to start with. If I can get bites using that pot at this time of year, 
that'll do for me. So let's get out there nice and smooth. Don't forget that you've got an expander on, it's a soft bait, so you need to take your time. Pellet fishing is like a time and motion exercise, really. And what I'm going to do, I've, lined, I've got a lovely tree on the far bank to line up with. I'm going to put them pellets right there. And then I'm going to accurately lower that rig right on top of it. Hold it for a few seconds, get it in there. And then we should be ready to wait for a bite. Now I've got that number 10, probably three inches from the hook. So we should be able to see a bite quickly. I'm already thinking I probably need another, like a number 12. Oh, I'll take one. Um, I'm going to put another number 12 on that though because I wasn't quite happy with how that was sitting. But we've got a bite. Only a small fish. But that is the beauty of expanders. You do get all sizes of fish really. You catch small F1s, big F1s, carp, skimmers, you name it. And this time we've just got a little cruising to start with. Lovely fish, and that is a telltale sign that everything's dead right. Bang in the top lip. Couldn't be any more in the top lip if I tried. So I'm just gonna put a number number 12 on, just to try and get that float right down. So we put that number 12 on, so let's get out and see if we can get the swim really going. So this is what I'm talking about. Fill your pot up and then give it a little squeeze and that allows you to get into position. And then we've just got to take our time. And like I say, I spent a lot of my teenage years, I'm 36 now, so I'm showing my age, but a lot of my teenage years, micros and expanders was the, the bait that we all used. And some matches, I never used to take anything else. And that was even in the summer. So uh, my experience with this bait is quite significant. And all I'm just gonna do is lower them pellets, that hook rig right on top. And you see there, I'm dotted right down now and I'm waiting for a bite now little tiny indication there now it's important the next key thing to talk about is how you strike now the last thing you want to be doing is striking that pellet off you just don't want to be doing it so we want a nice little lift and it takes a bit of, bit of uh, getting used to if you've never done it before you're just trying to lift the float almost out of the water and then if you don't hit the bite Lower it straight back down again. Again, top lip. Cruisions are ravenous. Four mil pellet. And that is as simple as it is really. We can up the bait using our pots. But for now, we're just gonna stick with this because we've gone in, we've had two bites and it's all about time and motion now. You see, I'm not worried about fishing like on the drop style or anything like that. Don't need to worry about that. The 4 by 12 feels about right. Get your pellets in first, your, your micros. Put them in there. And then get your pellet, your rig right on top of them. And we're right ready to go. And once you get it going, there, that's, that's what'll happen. That's perfect, that is. You lower it in, you wait a few seconds and you get a bite. That is, when micros and expanders are the best, that's what happens. You'll get quick bites and quick action. And granted, they're only small F1s and stuff, but often that is what you're catching on micros and expanders. You know, you're catching stockies, you're catching smaller F1s. That is oftentimes the fish you're catching. Not saying you don't catch big mama F1s, but you know, it is a method where you do get lots of bites. So we'll just plug away with this for a bit. Nice and steady. And let's look at that strike. So what we're trying to do is time and motion. So look, get the pellets in, dig that pot, tap the pellets out, lower the rig, and we're doing the same process every single time. We've got trying to keep a tight line between the float and the pole, using those back shots. And then if I get an indication, I'm just trying to lift the float out of the water. No big strikes. Just like that, and you can almost feel the fish on the end and then whiz it back. Now, it's worth saying, I've got a nice light yellow zip on today because I'm catching small fish, but when you're fishing like this, 
and you're getting loads of bites and you're getting loads of action, you just want to be keep coming back with a fish on. And for me, something like a yellow zip allows you to set that hook and then calmly and smoothly ship the fish out the swim, very quietly, so you're not spooking anything. And I think that that can make a big difference, personally. Like, granted, I could probably use the orange zip today and be fine, but, you know, the fish would be splashing on the surface, maybe, scattering around, whereas this, because it's so soft, I'm just lifting up into the fish, and they're just calmly guiding out the spot. So I'm not really spooking anything, which is important. When you're fishing in, you know, three foot of water on a November day, it's so important. Look at that, just trying to be disciplined with that lift. The rig sets itself straight away. No bites this chuck, might be a better fish in the area. See, I'm just trying to be. And I'm just sort of guiding the pole out to swim. A little, little, little cruising, but the mechanics of it are the same, whether we're catching six ounce cruisions or whether we're catching two pound F1s. The mechanics of the, the fishing is the same. Nice little fish. Now one little tip when you're fishing micros and expanders is to always have a little bit of ground bait. Now this could be crushed expander, this is just thatchers, straight thatchers, just a tiny amount. Can be a real difference maker some days, on real hard days. I used to remember when I used to fish the winter league at Tunnel Barn, you could be fishing expanders, over micros and not getting a sign. And you'd literally put a tiny little nugget of ground bait in like that on the same line and you'd get a response straight away. And I don't know what it is, ground bait's just got that pulling power that pellets sometimes don't have, whether it's the particles and stuff. And on rock hard days, adding a bit of ground bait, not all the time, just a little bit every now and again can really ignite your swim into action. So that's a great tip that is. Micros and expanders are the mainstay, don't get me wrong never rule that ground bait as well it can be really effective and like I say just match the hatch nice brown ground bait real winner okay so we've been fishing for a little while now and I've tried slightly bigger pot to deliver a bit more bait but to be honest it sent the fish a little bit there's a lot of fish feeding today a lot of small fish a lot of cruisions small f1s things like that so it sent the fish a little bit scatty if I'm honest so we've gone back down to that small pot and what we're actually doing now is hooking a fish and then dropping the pellets in on top of it once I've hooked the fish. And it seems to be keeping the fish quite calm. If I put my bait in and just follow in with my rig, it just seems to I foul up an odd one and miss an odd bite. Whereas if I turn my pot over and I'm fishing over my last pot of bait, if that makes sense. And look, I'm just getting a bite really quickly, tapping my bait in. And it's as quick as that at the moment. Keep it nice and simple. For those interested, I've got a 16 B911 F1 on, nice and sharp. 010, so keeping everything nice and fine. And we've got that yellow zip on, which allows me to hook the fish. Look at that, lovely cruising. Just allows me to hook the fish and, and ship back without any disturbance, really. So we just caught that fish and then potted them, bait, them pellets in straight on top. And it's, I've got to imagine that those pellets, a lot of them, are sort of being eaten now, a lot of them are maybe washed away. And there might only be a smattering of pellets left on the bottom, but that's quite nice because then when my expander comes in, it's one of the few offerings left and you get a quick bite. So it can be a nice way to feed this can when there's a lot of fish, like feeding for the next fish, if, if, you, if that makes sense. So maybe my pot's turned over, my rig's in. Why it's sticking up like that for? So we're turning my pot over, we're lowering our float in, down it goes. We're waiting for our next bite over that last pot of bait. And if I don't get a bite, I can always just tap these in on top of my float. But like I keep saying, less is often more when you're fishing with micros and expanders. And that is especially true because you can get giddy and feed too much bait and ruin the swim. So these tiny pole pots, although they look a bit gimmicky, they have got a place. But I won't hesitate to up the bait as well, like I say, and 
feed more. But for now, we're catching really well. We've had a few a few nice carp. We've had a few F1s. We've had cruising just about every little fish just pop there. Yeah, so we just found like a nice little routine. And I think we'll catch one more and that'll do us because it's been a nice little session. Got plenty of fish. And then we'll have a look at, um, yeah, we've had a nice little session, plenty of bites. Hopefully you've got some tips there on for expander fishing because it is simple. There's just a few key elements. And I think in this day and age of hard pellet fishing and other baits, this little simple method can be ignored. And especially this time of year, it can be so effective and simple and cheap. And a pint of micro is going an awful long way and a few little pound full of expanders. So, although they're not massive fish, we've got nice balanced tackle on. We can have a lovely day's fishing. Simple baits. Everyone's going to be hooked in a top lip like that because we've plumbed up perfect. We've got our that last dropper right near the hook. Fantastic way of fishing. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you again on the very next video.